Hi, I'm Matt, and let's get spooky. So remember when Halloween costumes used to look like this? What happened? With one-stop shopping at Woolworth or Woolco for your Halloween needs. Costumes from $1.83 to $3.99. Like Six Million Dollar Man, Bionic Woman, Superheroes, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, and a new favorite for girls, Holly Hobby. Make Halloween fun and easy. Make just one stop at Woolworth or Woolco. So, the first Halloween that I can remember had to have been back in 89, but the memories are a little fuzzy. And I only remember going to a single house, but we honestly could have gone under 50 for all I know. Or maybe we just went across the street and my mom was like, well, that's enough for tonight. Eh, screw this kid, he won't remember it anyways. But one thing I do remember is the costume. It was a Casper the Friendly Ghost costume with a thin plastic mask that was held on by a string. And a white garbage bag looking over shirt with a name and picture of the character. Something like this, but I believe it contained a graveyard scene if memory serves. These were the Ben Cooper costumes, and pre-1990, these were everywhere. Just imagine what the typical costume from 1985 looked like. Did you think of this? These were so prevalent, yet they seemingly disappeared overnight. So, what happened? Well, it all started back in 1927, when two brothers, Nat and Ben Cooper, started a vaudeville and masquerade costume company in New York City. They supplied costumes to live theater productions until the Great Depression made live theater less profitable and more rare. During this time, the culture was shifting, and Halloween was becoming more and more popular in society. Seeing an opportunity, Ben jumped at it. Branching off into his own company, Ben Cooper Inc., established in 1937. Fortune struck the company as they were able to secure licensing agreements with Walt Disney. This allowed them to produce costumes for Walt Disney's intellectual properties, like Mickey Mouse and Snow White. And by the late 1940s, Ben Cooper Inc. was one of the biggest and most successful Halloween costume companies in the United States. Over the next several decades, Ben Cooper was able to secure more licensing agreements with other brands, such as Marvel, DC, Hanna-Barbera, and Star Wars. Which, at this time, Marvel and Star Wars were not owned by Disney. Ben Cooper's political masks were a huge hit as well. Nixon, Reagan, H.W. Bush, all selling well. However, in 19 1963, tragedy struck the United States. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. President John F. Kennedy was assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald, shaking the nation. Ben Cooper Inc. made the decision to destroy the thousands of built-up JFK and Jackie O masks in their inventory, resulting in a large financial loss for the company. Yet, that wasn't the only hardship that Ben Cooper Inc. had to deal with. Investigators confirmed today that the cyanide found in Tylenol capsules at this Bronxville Woolworths last night matches the cyanide found in the pills which killed Diane Ellsroth last Saturday. It appears to be the same, chemically the same. The second contaminated bottle was one of thousands confiscated from store shelves in a square mile area of Bronxville after Ms. Ellsroth's death last Saturday. Police discovered the cyanide contamination in laboratory tests. Westchester County investigators say the latest evidence has put them no closer to a solution. On September 29, 1982, seven people died after taking cyanide lace time. This sparked fear across America as parents refused to allow their kids to go trick-or-treating. As distrust amongst people grew, candy and costume sales plummeted, making people rethink how they would celebrate Halloween. Sales didn't return to normal for Ben Cooper Inc. until 1987, but by then, the damage had been done. And in 1988, Ben Cooper Inc. filed for bankruptcy. The company was able to continue operation, but another misfortune struck in January of 1989, when their Georgia facility burned to the ground, taking with it two to three million dollars worth of inventory, which their insurance companies refused to pay, citing inaccuracies in their policy. The following years were spent in a legal battle with their insurance companies, until in 1991, they were yet again forced to file for bankruptcy. And in 1992, they were bought out by Ruby's Costume Company, and subsequently dismantled. However, in 2017, the company attempted a relaunch, which as far as I can tell, is still going on, 
but has failed to capture the marketplace and success that they once had. Although, I can't help but wonder, what would have happened if they would have survived all this turmoil? Did their downfall allow other companies to find success and gain some market share, resulting in better quality costumes? Or did we lose something iconic about Halloween? When I see those costumes, I think Halloween. They were just basic enough for you to have to use your imagination. But also, if your imagination isn't working, or you're just stupid, they have the picture and name of the character on the shirt for good measure. Everybody wins. We may never know what we've lost or gained from the downfall of Ben Cooper Inc. But I'd love to hear what your thoughts are down below. 